Hello everybody, it's Monday again. Can you believe it's Monday again? Bloody Monday, I can't believe it's Monday. Can you believe it's Monday? No, I just said I can't believe it. So what you, t I don't know what I'm singing anymore. Let's get on with the show. Chris Pritchard cycling new show. Chris Pritchard cycling new show. Chris Pritchard cycling new show. Hello everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Chris Pritchard cycling new show now as you can tell my voice still isn't back to where it should be however i'm feeling i'm not i'm not feeling any better than i did last week to be fair i still feel very i feel cranky up toward hungover still i know i didn't drink much but i just feel like anyway it's irrelevant how i feel you only care about the news don't you let's get on with it but first before we do let's have a word from our sponsor oh Velo skin. Now I use the term loosely when I say sponsor because it's not really a sponsor deal. We're just shouting them out because they're going to help us out later down the line um, with something that we're working on. So we thought we'd dedicate this week's content to our sponsors at Velo Skin, Yorkshire company, local company, trying to produce high quality, high quality chamois creams and other liquids. For cyclists to use. Now I know what you might be thinking. Hey Pritch, why do you use chamois cream when you're indoors? I only use it when I go out on a 100 mile ride. Well, indoors is probably one of the best places to use chamois cream. Because I'm not the only person, and don't make out that I am, that suffers from an itchy gooch when they're doing indoor training. Don't pretend you've not suffered the old dreaded numb privates while you've been on a training session. Now scientifically, I have no idea if this is beneficial or not. What I do know though, is that when I lather my chamois up with chamois cream from Vela Skin, it always makes me feel a lot better. It allows my bum to maneuver around that saddle, making it a hell of a lot more comfy on that gooch. You know what I'm talking about. But it's not just chamois cream that Velo Skin do. Velo Skin also do a range of post shave lotions, moisturizers, and soothing gel. So yeah, if you want, a lovely soft gooch and head down to the link in the description and order yourself some Velo skin. Tell them Pritch sent you. All right, first up in the news, let's talk about racing news. There was probably, a, in fact, there was a cycle cross race. I, I remember hearing something about it. Matthew van der Poel started at the back. I'm still going to predict he won. I don't even know the results, but I'm predicting van der Poel first, Lawrence Sweck in second, probably two, two knots in third, something like that. And in the women's category, it was probably Selena Del Carmen Alvarado that won the women's. Lucinda Brand in second, probably. And um, Yara Castell in, in third. The race was in Coxide. I think that's in Belgium. I ain't a clue. But that's your cyclocross news. And sticking with the world of professional cycling, Alex Dowsett has put pen to paper and signed a brand new contract with the Israeli Cycling Academy team. Now, it probably comes to no surprise that he signed for them. Um, they took over the World Tour license of Katusha Alpacin after Alpacin and Canyon decided to pull out of their sponsorship deals with the team. It looked like the team wasn't going anywhere, so Israeli Cycling Academy took the World Tour license. And with it, chances are, I can't remember how many of the 11 that were still under contract for Katusha Alpacin into 2020 they've taken across to the team, but Dowsett, I know for sure, was under contract still and he's moved across. That's it. Over in the women's professional peloton, Arkea Semsic are to have a women's team in 2020. Manager Emmanuel Huber actually announced this deal back in September. However, the news of this was eclipsed by the fact that Nairo Quintana had just signed, f find? Signed, he'd signed. Nairo Quintana had signed for the team, eclipsing this news about this new ladies team. Now the team isn't gonna be world tour for 2020, potentially 2021, 2022 they could be a World Tour team, but for next year, they're just going to be racing at the highest level of French racing and probably getting some invites to some of the big races, no doubt. Sticking with the women's professional peloton and Trek Segafredo rider Letizia Paternoster was hit by a car whilst out training in Italy. And when I say hit by a car, you do understand what I mean is she was hit by an idiot driving the car. The car didn't simply roll into her. The car was being used by a human who wasn't paying attention. 
She's been diagnosed with a fractured scaphoid in her left wrist, a broken front tooth after being hit by a car near Trentino. The injuries were confirmed by her Trek Segafredo medical team, and according to early reports, Paternoster was hit by a car on a roundabout. That's not good. I broke both scaphoids, and trying to put weight on those is just one of the most painful things ever. So hopefully she will make a full recovery. Scaphoids are a bugger though, because they, they rarely heal like back to 100% because there's such a, a, a tiny amount of oxygen and blood flow into that bone or around that bone that you never really fully heal. A little bit of medical advice there from Dr. Pritch. Next up, another professional rider though, got hit at the weekend. Our KSM sick rider, Ellie Gesper, was also hit by a car during a training ride in France. Now, according to eyewitnesses, the driver of the car failed to give way to Gesper on a roundabout, with the French rider having the right of way. The car's wing mirror struck him on the way past. Thankfully, during this incident, Gesper's worst injuries was nothing more than a bruised hand. Thankfully, he didn't break any bones. Should be making a full recovery in only a couple of weeks, which is great. However, why the bloody hell is this happening so often? Now, is it time for professionals to take a stand? And, well, I mean, what can they do though? They need to be out there training. Oh, it sucks. It absolutely sucks. But once again, I'm reporting on riders suffering injuries when drivers aren't paying bloody attention. Bit of local news for you Yorkshire folk out there as the start and finish venues for the 2020 Tour de Yorkshire have just been announced. But no Sheffield again. Bloody hell. Eight host locations have been announced, the most northerly Redcar and the most southerly Barnsley. No surprise, Leeds in there, Uddersfield, that's there, Halifax, Skipton, Beverley and Leyburn are all start stroke finish locations for Tour de Yorkshire 2020. As a Sheffield born and bred lad, and I'm not there now but I still feel like one, it always disappoints me when the Tour of Yorkshire doesn't come to Sheffield. It's one of the best cities in the world, period. But great for cyclists, there's some amazing routes around Sheffield. Hopefully the Barnsley route, whether it starts or finishes in Barnsley, will take in a little bit of the strines of the Peak District around Sheffield. I mean, it's too good an opportunity. They get so close to it, it'd be rude not to actually take it in. So fingers crossed Barnsley is gonna be a finishing town rather than a starting town, and they're gonna be able to take in that Peak District and around my area, not my area, my location. Next up, and breaking news from over the weekend, Ineos have pulled their sponsorship from one of the biggest, if not the biggest, World Tour teams in the world. They've not pulled it. But it says he's going to pull it if, the, if, if he found out that there was cheating involved. Starting from now. Okay, starting from now, if there's any cheating involved in Team Ineos, Team Ineos owner, or Ineos owner, Jim Ratcliffe is going to pull his sponsorship. Starting now. So anything else that happened before? Starting now. So according to the story over on Cycling News, Jim Ratcliffe said, I am not interested in the history, just our watch. But a lot of people that were, were around during that history are still involved in your watch. Jim. Jim Ratcliffe has stated that Ineos would have no hesitation in pulling the plug on their World Tour team if cheating was found within their ranks. Obviously this news is coming out with the news of Dr. Freeman and those tester gel testosterone sachets that we still don't know who they were for, even though they were probably for a rider. So Jim Radcliffe is just taking a stand here basically saying that if any cheating is happening within Team Ineos, he's gonna pull the money. I don't think he will. I have no interest in using methods to enhance performance that you shouldn't use. I have no problem with marginal gains, i.e. TUEs. Better chain rings or better aerodynamics. That's fine, that's all Formula One stuff. TUEs. But I've got absolutely no interest in cheating. That's not my game. So, let's be clear. Ineos haven't pulled their sponsorship. I don't want you to think that they have, although it was a great little clickbaity title in the thumbnail. And when I first said it in the headline, I bet you actually thought that they had, but they haven't. Just to make that, that clear. And as far as I'm aware, there is no cheating going on in Team Ineos. Everyone there uh, hasn't, no one's tested positive for a, for a banned substance. So there's no cheating going on. 
there might be marginal gains being pushed to the limits, boundaries, maybe getting bent out of all proportions, however, stepping into the realm of cheating, they have not, okay? Feel free to leave your comments down below about this one. Anything else I need to talk about? What else is happening in the world? Oh, here we go, actually, some Chris Pritchard Cycling News exclusives here. I did a 4DP test last week and the results were, were staggering. Absolutely, st I don't know if I just did it at the wrong time because I got a cold only a couple of days later, so maybe I was feeling ill, uh, but the results are just staggering. So I'm, put, I'm putting together a new series on, um, come on, let's be honest, you know I've put a bit of weight on. And when I say a bit, I mean a sheer load. And um, all motivation has just dwindled away. So I'm trying to get back on the steed. I'm trying to get back to some re re resemblance of a cyclist. And um, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be putting together a Sufferfest program based on my 4DP. And you can, you can judge your way. But if I said to you that my FTP now puts me in the C group in a Zwift race, would you be annoyed if I was to race the C group, even though my FTP is telling me that that's where I'm at? Leave your comments down below, let me know. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that dislike button if you've not enjoyed today. Um, hit that notification bell so you know when we go live with our live streams. Um, that's it. Thanks for the support. I've seen an increase in subs over the last few weeks, so that's been really good. I don't know why, but I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, sit there.